What's up, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? This is Ahmad, the ambassador with the Thinking Out Loud show, and this episode is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain it to you. Anchor has tools that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or a computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on different listening platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and plenty more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And the best part of it all, Anchor is 100% free. That's right. Anchor is 100% free. Download the Anchor app on Google Play as well as the App Store or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R.fm. Thinking Out Loud show. There we go. My bad. I'm back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just broke up on me somehow. Yeah. Dude, what's good though, man? How, How you been? Doing? How you been? It's just neutral, man. Same old shit. Different day, you know. All right, all right. I feel you. I see you with this little podcast now. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something new, something light, you know. Yeah. Well, shoot. We got your new book, though, The Sounds of Boredom. You know, I read it yep. the other day, matter of fact. I finished it. In you one read day, it? Though. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not, it's, 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 it, you know, the thing about the book is I didn't really want it to be super long. I just kind of wanted to, you know, have some, like, you know, some short poetry that, you know, people can just kind of look at and, and whenever they get the chance and go back to whenever they feel like, you know, it relates to them at the time. Right. So right, it, right. it was, you know, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the problem nowadays, a lot of people don't like to read, you know, so um, <clears throat> I try to make it so that with the book, uh, when they go to read it, they don't actually have to, take too much effort into doing so with the you know like i'm pretty sure you saw the uh, interior of the book and all the visuals right. yep. you know it's supposed to be you know kind of easy to read and actually kind of appealing to the eye in a sense you know right right yeah i like the um the content of this book though my favorite one of my favorites was like uh 6 a.m 6 a.m yeah. yeah that that's my favorite one too bro mm -hmm. <laughs> well oh. actually I think now I ain't gonna say that my favorite one. It's it's <laughs> one of my favorite ones, but I think that my favorite one might have to be Sweet Tea because that was the first poem I ever uh, recited in real life, uh, at like a like a poetry slam of some sort, you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that that one is may bring back some memories, and I also have an extended version on my Instagram. Okay. Now I got a question though. I mean, like, what what made you start like doing poetry? Like, what influenced you to do it? Okay, so so um, right when I was a lot younger, uh, um, yeah, I used to be on punishment a lot. I was I wasn't a bad kid, but you know I was, I was always getting in trouble in school because I would get bored because I was so smart. That's what my grandma used to say. I was so smart. I always I would get bored and start doing something I wasn't supposed to, cracking jokes, you know. Right, right. And call home. So you know I think I was on punishment so much <laughs> that sooner or later I just started reading a lot of things. We had this library downstairs in our in our house, you know. So. I would go down there, I would pick a book out and I would go back upstairs and I would sit in my room and for for like hours, I would read something. Sooner or later, we ran out of things to read, you know? So I would eventually start writing my own books and comics and things. I started a whole comic series called Stick Boy Adventures because I couldn't really draw. So the only thing I could draw was like stick figures. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I eventually moved on to poetry. Now, regardless of writing novels and writing comic books poetry is like one of the best ways i kind of express myself in a way um it, i find it sometimes it's very difficult for me to explain my emotions you know to people because i feel like the way that i explain it is way too complex or i might use metaphors i might sound sort of you know choppy and weird sometimes it's very difficult to, for me to explain things right. out loud but i don't know what it is but with poetry I, I want to say it's the one that's one of the easiest ways that I can express myself as far as um how how I'm feeling or how something makes me feel. Sometimes I don't even know how I feel until I write something down. Yeah, and I just, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, poetry is definitely a good way to, like, express your thoughts and express, like, what kind of words you want to say to the world, you know, to other people and mm -hmm. let them, you know, like, what's on your mind, you know? Yeah, and so, you know, when when I do poetry or when I'm ever, you know, whenever I'm just sitting here writing things down and I'm listening to, you know, nice, soft, 
you know, instrumental of some sort. I always, I always let whatever comes to my mind just, just you know, kind of just go on to whatever you know I'm writing. Usually, it's a uh, sometimes on my phone, or I might be writing and jotting it down in a notebook during class. You know, right. a lot of things just come to me randomly when I'm doing stuff like working or you know, just just out and about. When I'm seeing something, you know, it just comes to me, and I try to get it down as soon as possible. So, you know, I miss a lot of things, but you know, I get whatever I can down when I can. Right, and that's what makes it like so authentic, especially like like you just said, you know, like you see what's around you, and it just makes it sound more realistic. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, with with this poem that sounds of boredom, you know, the book's title is supposed to portray exactly what you know what happens when i'm bored you know it's more of a whenever i'm bored i tend to let my mind sort of wander and sort of start thinking about things and then i get to this point where i just start just randomly start thinking about complex complex sentences and I, that's what i like to describe poetry as it's like more like complex sentences you know right, right. To describe your mind as a person yeah man you also got poems in here like anemometer and astronomy you know and tell me yeah, about yeah. those poems so so uh specifically those type of poetry that type of poetry i do with um science and things like that i am a man of science in my own opinion but i also believe in astronomy like you know zodiac signs and uh yeah. full moons and things like that I, I i like i like that type of stuff it interests me in a sort you know i, yeah, I sort of think of myself as like a an astronaut in my own brain where i'm like swimming in the sea of my imagination and i'm wearing an astronaut suit and i'm just kind of exploring what there is in here and so i like to describe a lot of things as if i'm a wanderer right. of my own you know complexity or my own imagination and so um and a monitor um i believe that's the one about the wind right so I, I feel like, you know, um, I don't want to give out too much here, but <laughs> but uh, what's the name? Go ahead, buy the book. You'll, you'll understand. But, you know, it's about the wind and it, it's supposed to be more like a, a motivational type of situation here, you know? So right, right. It, it's, it's, it's kind of describing like to be more like the wind because okay. the wind is the wind is sort of strong and it has its it has its upsides. And if people are more like the wind, then they'll be better off as as a person. And I feel like, you know, and if you want to know more about that, you know, it's on Amazon, go ahead, check it out. You know, and my and my is one of my favorite um visuals actually in that book. Right, right. Now I read a uh, short term memory and you got this line, right? And it says, mm -hmm. and sometimes I forget to think before I act because love controls my actions. Tell me about that. Okay. So right. This is one of the biggest things about me. Um, a lot of things that I do is because of love. Mm -hmm. um, not to sound cheesy or anything, you know, but um, a lot of what a lot of people do is because of love. But um, I'm, a, I'm more of a giver and I, I like to make sure that people are OK. So when I have a circle of people that I say that I love and I call family, just know that they're good. Right. So right. a lot of the things a lot of the things that I do are because of love. And that specific sentence there, though, short term memory, mm -hmm. I'm describing how sometimes it can be sort of a little bad for me because short term memory is not really a good thing, you know. Right. So when it comes to sometimes I forget to um, what's the name? Sometimes I forget that I'm supposed to love myself first and make sure that I'm OK before Absolutely. I just go ahead and you know do things that aren't supposed to be done without thinking about myself first. And so that's what short term term memory is 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 one of the one of the poems that points out a flaw of mine. Where sometimes when in, you're in a relationship you might do things that you don't really usually do. You forget to care about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's what um that's it's crazy because like not to cut you off but like you know it's yeah. crazy because like 
now that you say that, you know, it's it's an accurate thing because people tend to put their their uh, partner, you know, before themselves and stuff like that. But meanwhile, they're lacking self love. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so, short term memory is to is is more of like a poem to kind of point that out. And if you see things in that poem that you might think like, oh. I sort of do this when I'm in this relationship or I'm doing it now in this one, or I did that in this previous relationship. You should think about yourself and understand that maybe you might be having a little short-term memory when it comes to your own care and your own love for yourself, you know? Yeah. And so that's why short-term memory is is, is a really good, I love that poem. Um, Actually, I love those visuals too. I like the, um, I like the visuals. I did on that one as well. It actually took me a really long time for the interior of the book i think i was up at 6 a.m i walked up the hill from my apartment and i uh jumped on the computer and just like literally just was like okay i know how to do this i did the research let's actually apply it it took me from 6 a.m all the way up to 2 a.m to finish all the visuals so (laughs) if i say that i love all the visuals then I'm sorry, but I, I really try my best to make the inside of the book really, really nice. So that people can, people can just like sit here and actually read it and look at it and be, be like okay reading it and not get bored with the mm-hmm. book and stop in the middle of it or something. Not that I mind, you know. Yeah. Take yeah. a break. Come back later. But you know, like what's crazy is like I was reading this exact poem and this is one of those poems that just makes you like okay like. You sitting back reading and it just makes you think you know what i'm saying like it, it mm-hmm. puts your mind in a different space yeah oh, which then, one is that short-term memory yeah yeah and then you got this other line too you said uh when you're losing your mind your emotions will be all you have left so i may forget mm-hmm. you in the next lifetime but i will always remember how you made me feel tell me about that see now this is one of my favorite type of uh things to say i don't know where i learned this from but um I'm actually a nurse, so I know these things are the last things you lose. Mm-hmm. So as as a nurse, I know that sometimes when you have dementia or when you have when you're losing your actual mind, not in a sense of crazy, but actually losing your mind and in, in general, and you might actually only experience those feelings that you had and you might not remember anything else. And right. so when it comes to those type of things, I know that it doesn't matter what somebody does to you, and I believe very strongly in this, but I don't, I don't, I don't care what somebody did to you. It could be from like the sixth grade or something, and now you're like 20. You, you're gonna remember how it made you feel at that time, but you might not quite remember exactly what they did. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's where grudges come in, you know? So. Mm-hmm. Man, it's crazy because it's like, there's a lot of people like you'd be surprised because like there's a lot of people that just hold grudges you know and it's kind of sad if you ask me though because it's like unhealed trauma if you think about it yep yep let um forgiveness is freedom absolutely really is Mm -hmm. and holding grudges is like putting yourself in prison is is it can kind of weigh you down and so that's what short-term memory is really trying to portray is that sometimes you might not exactly remember exactly what they did to you but you will remember how they made you feel. You got to kind of forgive and forget to let yourself get that, that, you know, that stuff that you need to get, get out of that situation and stop feeling like that towards that person. Resentment is not really a good trait. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and one thing I want to mention about that is like, um, the way I see holding grudges is kind of like a sort of, a uh, what do you call it? Like a, mental incarceration if that's the mm-hmm. word something like, mm-hmm. that. like something like that because like you're stuck in your mind thinking like of some trauma that you're not healed from but meanwhile you can heal from it whether like you forgive them apologize whatever you got to do you know so it's totally up to you and your consciousness to really make that decision you know what i'm saying yeah and yeah that's that's one of the biggest things in life is is to be able to forgive it's, it's really hard, but, you know, sometimes you just got to let that happen for you. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of people, like, boys, girls, men, women, whatever. They mm-hmm. got, like, uh, ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, stuff like that. And, yep. man, there's so many people out here that, you know, just hold grudges against ex-girlfriends or boyfriends just because, oh, he or she cheated on me. He or she uh, 
had sex with my cousin. You know what I'm yep. saying? But it's like, <laughs> I swear, yeah, and yeah. and and that's the thing. The fact that people are sitting here holding these grudges against people that did something wrong to them, just know that they're only showing you who they truly were. So that's why are you mad at them? Why are you mad at them? Really think about that. Yeah, that's why their, that's the true colors. You know what I'm saying? Like true colors just shown and you're mad at them for showing their true colors. You want them to be somebody else? You want them to lie to you, you know? And it's like at the end of the day, one thing I learned though is like everybody wasn't raised the same. So mm-hmm. you can't get mad if somebody, you know, doesn't have the same intentions as you do. Like, okay, you could be loyal, you could be this, you could be that. And then the next person will try and jump ship when things go left. So you can't get mad at that. You can't get mad at yourself. And you can't really be mad at them too much. I mean, it starts mm-hmm. from home. But at the same time, you just got to live and learn and accept it. You know, and there's plenty of fish in the sea. You know, if mm-hmm. if it happens, just you learned your lesson and move on. Like there's people that come in your life. They're either a lesson or a blessing. You know, if they're a blessing, yeah. then they're around. If they're a lesson, mm-hmm. they jump ship. You know, it just happens, man. Mm-hmm. Now, like you got this other uh, poem called Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> First line, <laughs> it says, "I believe the hardest thing to do is love someone." Tell me about that. So, now Valentine's Day is a really good one um, because it's supposed to, like, Valentine's Day is a glorified holiday that that's that's like, okay, now show people that you love this person. Okay, why aren't you doing that previously or before? Don't we do that every day? If you're in a relationship. Valentine's Day is not the only time that you're supposed to be showing love or expressing some sort of love in some way, you know? You're supposed to be doing things like this all the time. So what the, what I meant by Valentine's Day is that sometimes people glorify love as if it's not hard. And so that's what I think Valentine's Day does. They glorify it as if it's not hard. They, they only see that one nice part. They don't actually sit here and say, okay, Here's the bad part. Here's all this other stuff. So the line that you've mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to love someone. It really is. One of the hardest actions in life, I want to say, or one of the hardest things to do is to find somebody who you can call the one or your soulmate. You know, a lot of people search for that like half their entire life. And so some people don't even find it. And so that's, it's like one of the questions in life that like, who is this person for me? Mm -hmm. And it can be extremely difficult, more difficult than something you can learn in a book or something you can learn in class or something you can gain from working hard at. Sometimes you work really hard for love and it's not what you, it's not even the one that you're supposed to be working hard for. It's one of the hardest things in in life, I want to say. Man, it's crazy that you say that because like, like you said, people you know struggle to find love and i think like i said before i think it all starts from home like let's say okay you take the average like teenage girl or she could be early 20s whatever so Mm -hmm. you know she got done dirty by her ex-boyfriends and shit like that but then you know it all starts where like um how she grew up she grew up in a dysfunctional toxic household you Mm -hmm. know her mother you know used to call her a bitch and all type of shit her yeah. father probably was an alcoholic did drugs and used to like beat on her probably molest her and shit yeah. so with that type of trauma as a child it kind of builds up as you get older and then you become a teenager like you know you get in puberty shit like that and you know it's just like it, it could be traumatic and then that type of um that type of cycle can sometimes just never end you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and and here's the thing a lot of people don't know what love actually looks like, especially amongst the, like, sadly to say, especially amongst the black community. We we sometimes don't even know what love is supposed to look like. And it starts with your parents. Uh, I got a friend. Um, she she actually has both her parents in life. She's black. She has both her parents in her life and they're in love. And she's seen that her whole life. So she's more aware of what she's supposed to have in life compared to somebody who never had their parents in their life or never had those two parents or those two people in their life that showed them, hey, this is what love is supposed to look like. If you don't see this in a relationship that you're in or somebody else you care about is in, then you need to let them know or you need to let yourself know that something's not right. Either change it up or leave, you know? And so that's why sometimes it can be very difficult to find because you might not know what it looks like. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just using an example, like, you know, like, um, like I was saying, like, you know, if a girl, you know, she grew up in a toxic household. Mm-hmm. Now, as she get older, she's going to she's going to like want that man to just have comfort in, you know what I'm saying? Because her father never gave her that comfort. Like exactly. her father used to beat on her and, you know, do drugs, alcohol on her, shit like that. So it's like she's going to need that sort of comfort. And she's running around dude to dude, you know, trying to find that that boy, you know what I'm saying, that mm-hmm. they could fill in. But they failed to do that. So now she's all depressed and thinking she'll never find love. But I mean, it's like that in most cases, you know, you never know. You just got to keep exploring your options or even like mm-hmm. me. I'm going to just use uh, my example, you know, like I grew up with just my mother in my life, you know, but yeah, yeah I still know how to treat a woman and love a woman like the right way. Yeah. And respectfully. So, you know, it's not like I'm out here like one of these other guys just like using girls and, you know, hopping from female to female, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. Cause it, it it happens from home. It starts from home, like as really you does. get older too. You gotta you gotta experience some sort of love in your life as a child. Mm-hmm. If you don't know if you don't know love of some sort, whether it be from one one parent or two parents, it doesn't matter. Shoot, you know, you like gotta love. experience some love. Yeah, like just like uh, you know, let's say like um, you got both parents in your life, and let's say like your mom, you know, like somebody's mom is like strung out on drugs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Or just like, you know, in some households where it's like you got like two brothers and like, remember the movie Boys in the Hood when um, yeah. the mother was like, you know, she didn't like Doughboy, but she liked Ricky. She liked Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So like you don't get that love from your mother and yet your father's not around. So if you don't have that type of love in your life, who's going to love you? The streets or, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. something negative. And by the way, R.I.P. Ricky. That's my boy. <laughs> Hold it down. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) But uh, you know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of people out here, a lot of kids who don't have love in their family or love some sort of love towards them in some way, and they they don't grow up knowing what it is. And so when you see Valentine's Day, think the opposite of Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. You know, think about the message that they're trying to portray. Here, show show love randomly today. Yeah. Or show the person that you love randomly today. You know. I know it's a. I know it's supposed to be a good thing. But sometimes I look at it as. Sometimes love is not easy, and you guys making it look easy, you know, and it's not. And I believe, like you know, like a lot of people say, love is fake. But I mean, it's really how you perceive it. You know, if you grew up, there's people that grew up on love and people that grew up on survival. If you mm. grew up on survival, then it's going to be a difficult process to love you or probably even try to love someone but if you grew up on love then you know how it is and you know how you can adapt but sometimes you know like someone you know raised on love and then another person raised on survival they can make it work they just got to make it happen and put in the work and the person on love really got to um give that energy to the person that's raised on survival yes that's perfect yeah and a lot of these a lot of women you know they they hate like I would say independent women you know and and you get these independent women here all, all the time and so they really never really had much or they had everything it could be one or the other and so they might be like oh oh I was given everything so I want to learn what it is to not take things from people and so that can kind of take away from a relationship as well you know or maybe they might not have had anything at all and so the smallest things might be good enough for them like how you mentioned where um the father might be beating on the, the daughter or right. you know might be an alcoholic so if shit you you not an alcoholic or maybe you're not you know beating on her right oh right. now you're just this great you're this great man but right. on the side you're cheating or on the side you're not doing what you're supposed to do in this relationship or you might verbally abuse her you and know it's crazy to think because like now that you say that that type of stuff like you know how like kids can easily learn from their parents right mm-hmm. so like you know if the same stuff you've seen like like if you've seen your dad out here like cheating on his wife you know yeah. and selling drugs doing like toxic things then sometimes that same energy can pass on to the next generation like your child your child's child you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. it's on um, what do they call it? like a generational curse yep so it's, it's sad man yeah as it's, it's a sad thing amongst um amongst society nowadays it's sad now you got this other poem called the blind man and the very oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Well, question. It says, how does a blind man see his world? Tell me about that. So perception is the biggest way that we um, we view our world, whether it be, you know, our sense of taste, you know, touch, all that. And so one of the biggest things that we perceive our world in is, is through our eyes, you know, and it, it had me thinking really honestly, how does a blind man perceive his world if he cannot see it, you know? Like you ever seen these things where in movies, a blind man might date an ugly woman, but be perfectly happy, mm-hmm. right? And so he's thinking about this woman and the best possible way she could be portrayed, you know? And so he might be so in love with this woman because she has a grand personality, but she probably doesn't look how, you know, us with eyes might agree with. Right. She's very ugly in a sense right? right but it doesn't matter to this blind man all he cares about is what he can hear taste and touch mm-hmm. you know so when i mean when i ask you you know the reader in this book i when i ask him how does a blind man perceive his reality he perceives it in the best way possible because he cannot perceive it any way else right based off of those senses that he has his scenario is is contemplated in the best way possible. You know, the brain actually perceives the world for us using our observations. And if it didn't, we would we wouldn't see or everything would be kind of, you know, weird or perceived in a different way. Everything is just a bunch of static electricity and stuff like that. And the world says, "Okay, so that static electricity is a computer." And I see a computer and so, you know, so the blind man doesn't see all this stuff. So he perceives his world in the best way possible to make him happy. That's and right. I feel like, you know, that that poem specifically is it's more like a wake up call for a lot of people who have these expectations for their observations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just like seeing the world in a way in which it actually isn't. Is, is, is like the best way to live your life because sometimes your surroundings or your environment might not be very motivational or good yeah that's right I mean like you know a lot of people a lot of people don't understand just go over their heads with it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I didn't grow up the greatest way you know yeah, but yeah. when I was a child I looked at everything as if I was a blind man smile my way through the whole thing and i think like you know like as you get older you know and you uh gain more knowledge and wisdom and stuff like you start to see and it's kind of like you go from this you know like a blind kid basically Mm -hmm. to like the more and more you get older you start to see differently you start to like open your eyes more like everything starts to make more sense yep and that's where the analogy of an old man comes from Mm -hmm. because it could have been any blind person I could have said the blind person, but I said the blind old man. Now, not to be sexist, mm-hmm. the man part was just, you know, an ad. But, <laughs> but the uh, what's the name? The blind old is the part that you should pay attention to, because once you get older, that's when you start to get you gain this wisdom, like you stated. You know, mm-hmm. over the ages of uh, over the ages of you growing up, you you begin to gain some sort of wisdom about how life really is and what it means to make you happy and what you should do to make you happy. Right. If everybody viewed the world as a blind old man, it probably would be better off because we would have all this wisdom and none of the none of the crap that life shows us when we're in a bad situation. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, um, and then there's this other poem, Identity, and then you got, you said, uh, where do I belong and who do I get to call my home? Now, it's that's so deep because it's like, there's people that got a home, but then at the same time, they feel like, you know, like, is this really my home? Is this re-? like, you know, for example, like, you hear people all the time, like, oh, yeah, I hate living such and such. I hate living here. I hate living here. But it's just like, you know, you got a house like for us, like we live in Syracuse, so, you yeah. know. We live in Syracuse, but what we consider Syracuse our true home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Would this be the place that you want to settle down in? 
Yeah, like, is you know? this the place where I'm happy? Is this the place where I'm content? You know, because, mm-hmm. like, if it brings me so much negativity and, like, toxicity and stuff like that, then it's not my home. Exactly. I belong here. And, and, and identity also is portraying sort of that longing to have a family that I, I stated. You know, I'm, I was adopted. I was in foster care for mm-hmm. part of my life. Mm-hmm. And so um, it makes me like feel like sometimes I don't actually belong in places you know like um the family I grew up with had the last name Johnson I had the last name Surrey for the longest I felt like everybody else was sort of here and I was over here right, right. you know and being the middle child you know so it's like a lot of the time you don't have I, I longed for that sense of belonging identity what is my identity I don't know it I went to the air force for a short amount of time and found it there Mm-hmm. with my brothers i call them my air force my airmen brothers yeah and to have that torn away from me when i got kicked out killed me you know i yeah. found some sort of identity i found something that i could belong to and it was taken away from me mm-hmm. and sometimes i feel like sometimes i even place identity in women you know mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. multiple uh, girlfriends of mine in the past i tried to place identity in these women you know, and I try to say, okay, this is my home with her. She is my home, you know, but sometimes they don't always work out. You yeah, know? yeah, it's life, man. It happens. Like sometimes it's, it's a bad feeling, but I mean, you know, people got to reveal themselves at some point. And it's exactly. crazy that you say that because it's like with that line, that specific line right there, it's kind of like, you know, trying to find your purpose in life and trying to figure out who you are mm-hmm. and finding yourself and that's a lot of you know that's something that a lot of people struggle with in this time yep and, and, and i see that in younger people as well mm-hmm. i mean i'm young myself but yeah. you know a lot of people in their 20s and they're like when they're just fresh out of high school they just rush to college yeah some people don't even know what they want to do mm-hmm. they just think okay, this is what i'm supposed to do and then like later on down the line you're like um i don't think i like this it was it's crazy. Really- it's like, you know, let's say like, okay, like something doesn't work out for one person. They were so mm-hmm. content thinking like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, but the business fails and stuff like that. So what's your backup yep. plan? Like what else do you yeah. got in mind? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So people, people try to find their identity sometimes their whole life mm-hmm. and they never find out what makes them truly feel like their home. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a, it's a broad metaphor for a lot of things because your home can be defined as basically anything when you find your home or what identifies you or makes you feel like you are you're here you belong you have to latch on to that and you have to keep that close do anything you can to make sure that that is okay mm-hmm. sometimes i'll give anything to go back to the air force but at the same time i feel like i learned a valuable lesson from the scenarios and the situations that happen and so you know if that's where the universe pushes me towards, then I have to go in that direction. Right, right. When it comes to when it comes to that identity, that's that's, that's a very personal poem too. Um, you know, because it, it has it hits home. You know, it, I, I'm actually speaking from a bit of experience of stuff that I feel truly. Mm-hmm. And I was reading it too, and I thought to myself, like, damn, this is deep. Like, this makes you, you know, have some sort. I'm saying it makes it cool to just be like, okay, I may not know who I am at the moment, but I know, Mm -hmm. you know, who I'll become. It's just I got to have faith in myself. And that's really what it's about at the end of the day. Like, you know, life is really about finding your purpose and serving your purpose as well. And if you can't find it right now, you just got to believe in yourself and, you know, have that that prep talk with yourself and be like, okay, you know, I'm I'm in a bind right now. I'm stuck right now. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just got to trust God yourself and you know believe things will work out and you'll find exactly. your way in this life and start yeah. it yeah you gotta believe that you're gonna find your home mm-hmm. because it's like you know like you know like us we young we in our early 20s and mm-hmm. we're not supposed to have it all figured out and you know you exactly. got like our um our elders telling that and too you know like you know how we was younger and they'd yeah. be like you know um you gotta do such and such like go to college or do this and that but then mm-hmm. like once you get to that age and you do it you know and it just doesn't work out then it's almost like you let them down but at the same time it was more of a um that wasn't for you you know what i'm saying yeah. so you know like 
that's not what you were probably meant to do and a lot of people don't understand that they think that they have to be doing something right now right now right now something has to be happening if you're working towards something and you're doing things that are related towards that long-term goal you are doing something Mm -hmm. a lot of people think that just because they're not doing something at this very moment that they're a failure or something and then that doesn't push you to book to get to that long-term goal all it does is push you further back and you it know makes it's crazy you like, it's just like you know it's okay to fail you know mm-hmm. everybody's gonna fail. That's, the, that, that's what you want to do right mm-hmm. you want to fail fail a couple times do it just to get it out of the way you know like just like fail literally go outside and fail like on purpose just you can be like okay i just failed oh gosh that's so much weight off my shoulder like oh i look stupid well it's okay to look stupid it's okay to fall down nine times and pick yourself up the 10th time you may never know what brings you on the 12th time if you keep Mm -hmm. falling because you failing (laughs) just gonna be that much better when you actually don't fail and so then when you're not failing and you good and you up now you can be like hey man i failed like 20 times bro Mm -hmm. this is where i'm at now though Mm -hmm. you know look at me and I failed 20 times. Shoot. That's a motivation right there. They yeah. get back up on the 105th time. Like I said, it happens. You down. You just got to mm-hmm. have that strength and courage to just pull yourself up. Exactly. Man, a lot of these rappers nowadays, too, started at older ages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made millions, billions. You just gotta gotta keep getting back up. Like it's a lot of people. You gotta let yourself it's all about like thinking smarter too. You know. Mm-hmm. You just think smarter. Now, um, the last thing I want to ask you because I don't want to hold you up. I know you're on the time schedule. No, you're um, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was doing ascension, and um, it said ascension. Yep, and it was uh, mm-hmm. what was the bare minimum of my reality? Tell me about that. So, and this, um, I'm gonna give a little context to the people they haven't read it yet. So, so the bare minimum of my reality. So in this poem, I'm explaining how I feel as if I am not from this world and I actually fell from a higher plane. Mm-hmm. And so, um, when I'm, when I mention this bare minimum, what is the bare minimum of our reality right now that we're perceiving? Right. Mm-hmm. So we see our reality as just these you work for money and you keep working for money and everything you do revolves around money. So the bare minimum of your reality is you working a nine to five for money all day. Sometimes it could be a different bare minimum, you know? but you know, what, what was the bare minimum of my reality at this higher plane? Cause society and the way in which rules are made and the things in which, you know, are followed were not this, are not the same as a lower plane. You know, there might be what, I don't know, gods and mythical creatures on this other plane. I have no idea. I feel like I don't belong in this plane and I must have fell from a different, you know, different plane down here. And I even mentioned how I feel like they're laughing at me from the higher plane saying, ha ha, you fell down there. You know, Mm -hmm. how'd you get down there? And so it's, it's, it's like a smack in the face for me. (laughs) You know, I'm kind of. I'm kind of saying like, you know, I was greater once and then I, I failed. I don't know. But like <laughs> at that sense, the, and the sense of it, it's just me just kind of thinking like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I was from here. You know, like, yeah. I think, I think I, uh, I think I fell down a little bit, you know, <laughs> I think I'm from another planet or something. <laughs> yeah, I think I died on accident and came here to a different plane. I was reincarnated or something, you know, <laughs> but you no. Know, so like when it comes to this stuff, you know, when it comes to ascension um, and uh I spell it with like two dots in it because I spell it out like ascension. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason why I did that was because when it, when it comes to ascension, I'm, I'm explaining it in a sense of um, I want to ascend back up. And before I get there, I have to stop somewhere along the way. So it's like dots, boom, 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 uh, ascension. So that's where, that's where I'm going with that. Um, but sometimes living in your imagination you can feel as if you know a lot of creative people probably can you know understand this but when you're super creative and you get these 
urges or these like this imagination that just comes out of nowhere and a lot of people question my imagination too they're like oh how you how do you come up with this stuff and i'm just like i don't know i don't know where it comes from Mm -hmm. and honestly speaking it could be events that i lived or things that i did in another life like a past life a past life of a higher ascension where this stuff was possible you know or where this this type of talking poetry right could have been like regular conversation there and so it makes me kind of think what if i was from another life and i fell and i don't remember any of my past life i'm only remembering it in the creative way of poetry right right yeah man you know that's ascension right there for you you know the new book sounds of boredom is out now on amazon and uh it's like Mm -hmm. 15 dollars i think no, it's 13, 13 but um, it'll, it'll, it'll probably be like, you know, sales tax and shipping and handling. It'll probably put it at like 15, 20, you know, something like that. But yeah, man, make sure you guys go, go, you know, buy the paperback copy. I'm going to see if I can get like a signing or a thing going on at my job. I don't even know. But, <laughs> you know, anybody, anybody who wants to, what's the name? What's it? Anybody wants to buy it? You know, you can um, look up on my Instagram, uh, Devonair, D E V A N E R E, Surrey, S U R R A E. Or you can go on my um, Facebook, Devonair Surrey. It's just S U R R E Y instead of A E. And you can, you'll find it on there too. Um, honestly speaking, if you support, you support, and I appreciate you. And I really appreciate everybody who's already supported. Thank you very much. And if you want your book signed, just like literally text me and I'll find time because I appreciate anybody who does that. I, I told people, a lot of people, I told them, I said, if I actually get the book, if I sign your book and I actually get famous one day and I, you know, make a lot of money or something like that, I will literally buy signed copies for a lot of money. So if you're ever in a rut and you know you have a signed copy, literally just send it to me and I will send you back like literally because I, I really honestly speaking just to be able to hold my book in my hand is all I ever wanted the fact that I got so much support from a lot of people is is, is amazing I appreciate all of you yeah man it's motivation you know like support your future black authors now mm-hmm. um, you got any like future books to tell the people that you got coming soon I have literally a lot of upcoming work coming out um uh, I'm I want to say I have three more poems, po- poetry books coming out. Um, and I have one novel coming out by the end of next year. I want to get it by the end of next year. But um, next year it will be full of poetry books. So look out for those. And um, I will do another podcast with with our boy here for if you guys want to know more about or deeper into the poetry and stuff like that just you know we'll, we'll do this again because this was actually pretty fun and i really appreciate you put me on the podcast man like i said man i'm proud of you dog like you came a long way and this you know your own self-published book man not a lot of people can say that and you're the first person i know that got their own book and it's self-published. Yeah. <laughs> i appreciate that That's a lot cool. of people are saying that i really appreciate you man thanks for letting me come on the podcast i really appreciate oh, that because i'm proud of you man because i honestly speaking this is this is really good. This is good, bro. It's good for you know what I'm saying, young black men, you know, just mm-hmm. giving an opportunity. And you know, we got all types of good things coming for 2022 for sure. Exactly, exactly, man. I appreciate that, man. And look, man, it's a lot of black excellence, you know, kind of spiraling off of it, you know. I, mm-hmm. I feel I feel the energy in the air, man. I, I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to, to anything you're doing as well. So, you know, let me know what I can do for you. Yeah, we're going to have you on the show next time. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Thinking Out 